Well, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we're going to be talking about how you can uh, prove the value of marketing to the C-suite. And I'll introduce ourselves first. So I am Chris Skabish and presenting with me today is Nico Brooks. We're both co-founders and principals of Two Octobers. Two Octobers is a uh, purpose-driven uh, digital agency. We are a certified B Corp, uh, which is something I really love talking about. So if you're curious about that, please um, please reach out um, in the office hours or afterwards. We, we would love to talk about what that means for us and how you could become a B Corp. Um, as a matter of business, we provide training and services in marketing analytics, digital advertising, SEO, content marketing, and email. And so if, um, if you're looking for help in any of those areas, we would love to be a part of your consideration and please um, check out our website or connect with us. Our email addresses uh, are chris at twooctobers.com and nico at twooctobers.com, which will be um, at, again at the end of the presentation. All right, so let's dive in. Um, have you ever had this happen to you? You get into a discussion with uh, one of your higher ups. You're super excited about what you're uh, digging your hands into with marketing um, and you're getting a blank stare back. What you're communicating isn't landing well. Um, your leaders aren't understanding what you're saying. They're not engaging. They're not, under, uh, they're not excited about what you have to share. And they're certainly not understanding the value of what marketing is doing for the business. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to help you uh, expand your thinking and, and communicate differently and better uh, with the C-suite, with the leadership in your organization so that you can um, demonstrate that value that we all know that you're providing. So how are we going to do that? First, we're going to talk about, um, you know, what is business talk and what is marketing talk? How do they think about business differently? And we're going to talk about uncovering what the goals, objectives, strategies, and tactics are that run your business. How to translate that into metrics uh, that you can um, analyze and report and discuss. And then how to communicate that. How do you actually communicate metrics in a way that um, helps people understand the value of what you're doing? We're going to start out by taking a look at the CEO. So the CEO and other leaders in your organization, they have a different view of the world and the, and the business than you do. So it starts out with them being at the level of a big picture. They've got the big picture for where the company is going, what the vision for the company is, where it sits in the market, in your industry, and they're focused on those big numbers, those top line numbers around what is the revenue, what are the costs, and what are the profit? They're thinking with a longer time horizon. So they're thinking out to next month, next quarter, next year, and five years down the road. How does all the information I'm gathering today help us get to the big picture down the road? Data is interesting to CEOs, but data in context is how they look at the world. So what is this data compared to last year? What is it compared to benchmarks, compared to com competition? Data by itself is not very useful, but data in context is really uh, powerful to CEOs. Um, as long, at the same time that they're focused on the big picture and drawing that picture for everybody out in the organization, they're also keeping an eye on what's important now to get to those goals. So I wanna to get to those goals. What's broken right now that might need adjusting so we can stay focused on where we're going? What's a new opportunity that's presented itself that we might wanna take advantage of? So there is a little bit of big picture and you know, what do I need to do now to get to those next goals? Let's take a look then. If the CEOs are looking at the forest, uh, for the trees, the marketers really have a more narrow view. Our role as marketers is to focus on how are we getting there? How are we getting to that revenue cost and profit picture, that big picture vision of where we're going down the road? What is the channel mix? Uh, and how are those channels performing that are gonna get us there? How's that looking today, this week, this month, this year? And uh, probably like us, 
you love data. Um, marketers, especially digital marketers, uh, really love data. Um, and hopefully we're looking at that in context too, but we're really comfortable being enmeshed in lots of different data. So we just have two different um, visions of the world. And that's part of how a company gets work done. So there's nothing wrong with that. But when the CEO is looking at you know, numbers like profit and loss statements, and marketers are looking at like the number of sessions that came from this keyword or that paid website page. How do we bridge the gap in communication between the two sides um, so that again, we can demonstrate that value? Is it finding the right metric? Is it simply a matter of saying, okay, if I could just understand what metric the CEO is focused on, if I could just communicate to them how many purchases we built uh, we drove, um, how much revenue marketing supported or how many marketing qualified leads there were, or even better, maybe some metrics like customer acquisition costs or marketing costs as a percentage of revenue. Yeah, I think those are all great. And they they help you communicate uh, better in ways that this, at a higher level in ways that the CEO is thinking. But that's not really the whole picture. What I would argue is that we really need to be thinking up a level. What do I mean by that? Well, let's start at the very top, which is what is the company trying to accomplish? So I'm gonna introduce a model to you that starts out by saying, hey, what are the company's goals? And these goals are often um, around revenue. You know, maybe we have a goal of increasing revenue by 20% this year, or the company has a goal of um, beating out their competition in the US market, some sort of big picture um, goal. And that's how, um, how the leadership is driving the company forward is by prioritizing a specific goal. Beyond the goal, underneath the goal, what measurable targets are we shooting for? So we call that the objective. So, a goal can be separated into multiple objectives. If our goal is to increase revenue by 20%, um, perhaps we have a US uh, revenue uh, increase goal of 5% and a, a European revenue increase goal of 25% by the end of the year. So what are the measurable targets that will help us get to that goal? The next step is we can divide that objective into several different strategies. So this is really the how. If our goal is to increase US sales by 5%, there's a ton of different ways we can accomplish that. So what are the specific strategies that we're going to select? Are we gonna introduce a new product? Are we gonna make our, our website more efficient at producing um, purchases? Are we gonna hire new sales staff? So what are the different strategies that we're gonna to use to accomplish this? And at this point, I would encourage you to be thinking broadly, like the goals, objectives, and strategies encompass marketing, but they also encompass other functions. It is this goal of 5% increase in uh, revenue in the US that is driving us to have a operational goal of opening a new office in, um, in Tallahassee. Uh, so, the objectives and strategies that are used here run across all the functions in the company. For most of this conversation, we're gonna be talking and focusing in on this, the objectives and strategies that marketing supports. So those tend to be around revenue, tend to be around um, getting new customers, maybe customer uh, retention. So what are the strategies that support the objectives? And then at the bottom of this period, this pyramid are the tactics. So what activities are we going to do to support those strategies? So if we're going to increase the uh, revenue, e-commerce revenue, what are the tactics we're gonna employ? Maybe we're gonna run a paid media campaign. Maybe we're going to add products to the website. What are the activities that we're going to do that will support those strategies? So let's take another look at that of what that would look from the top down. So hypothetical company uh, sells widgets. Their uh, overall goal is to grow revenue by 5%. One of the objectives, so one of the ways that we're gonna do that is to increase our e-com revenue by 20%. 
how are we going to do that? Well, one of the strategies we've chosen is to increase the conversion rate. And if one of the ways that we're going to do that is to um, do a usability study. So we think that, you know, from the marketing view, we think that usability study is going to identify changes we want to make to the website, which will increase the conversion rate, which will contribute to an e-com revenue increase, which will help the company grow revenue. So hopefully all that makes sense. Please feel free to drop questions into the chat if you have any questions about this. Um, we're gonna go through an exercise of, of pulling this together so you can get a little bit more tangible idea of how to develop these goals, objectives, strategies, and tactics. But maybe one of the things you're already starting to realize is based on the description of what a C-level leader is interested in versus what a marketing um, leader is interested in, you can see that the metrics that the C-level is interested in tend to be the metrics that are describing what's happening with the goal that's really important to them, what's happening with the objective, and how are the strategies working or not working to help us reach those objectives. Whereas the marketing team is really more focused on the metrics around the tactics. So we said we were going to spend more in paid media. How is that paying off for us? We said we wanted to increase the conversion rate. Is that happening or is that not happening? One of the reasons I would suggest that sometimes marketing communication is lost um, to leaders is because we, we're too granular, we're too low level, we're talking about tactics and we need to be talking about strategies, objectives and goals and how marketing is contributing to those things. Over to you, Nico. So, the, so, so Chris showed this tidy pyramid of, of goals, objectives, strategy, and tactics. And, and here we have that under the acronym GOST, G-O-S-T. When, when we do this, I think one of the things that we've found is that um, some organizations have a really clear idea of, of what the organizational goals, objectives, strategy, and tactics are. And, and it's really, it's easy to get to, okay, here's what they are, and then here are the ones that relate to marketing. But most of the time, that's not true. Most of the time, there are, there's less clarity. Um, and, and one of the things that we found is that like marketing is doing something and everybody agrees that it's a good idea, but it doesn't necessarily map up to something that is sort of this quarter's or this year's goal for the organization. So, so we found that using mind maps as a way to sort of flesh out what those relationships are is really helpful. Um, just because like you wanna have the ability to kind of move things around, uh, ultimately getting to this idea that we have tactics that serve strategies, that serve objectives, that serve goals. Um, we put a couple of goals that are, are typical uh, that marketing is going to be contributing to. As Chris mentioned, like if you have a goal of restructuring your debt, um, well, that's probably not something that market, marketing is, is involved in at all. Um, the one, you know, certainly most often growing revenue is a primary goal. So what I want to do is just kind of go through the process of saying, okay, so, so if we were to put this in action, uh, for growing revenue, then, then I think Chris had the example of growing e-commerce revenue by 20%. So we're going to say grow e-commerce revenue by 20%. So, so now we have that as a, an objective. What, what, um, I like just sort of tagging them as I go, just, just to sort of keep clarity on, on what each one of these things are. Um, so then the next thing that we would wanna think about is, okay, well, so if that's an objective, how, how are, like, what are some ways that we're trying to grow e-commerce revenue? Um, and uh, let's say that I have, um, as a strategy for growing e-commerce revenue, I want to increase um, my 
organic um, traffic to product pages. Um, oh, one thing I should have mentioned here that I'm so so the example that we thought about as we were um, putting together this presentation is a, a bike shop that has physical locations and sells online. Um, and certainly so far, all of this applies to anybody that sells stuff online. Um, but I'm gonna get into a couple of examples that are bike shop specific. And we chose that both because it's something that kind of everybody sort of understands the business model of a bike shop, but also we do a lot of work with bike shops. So it's, a, it's an area that we're very familiar with. Uh, so, so then we have the objective of um, growing e-commerce revenue by 20%. Um, we have a strategy to serve that objective of increasing organic traffic um, to uh, product pages. So then, then the next thing we want to think about is, all right, so how do we achieve the increasing organic traffic to product pages? Um, and so a pretty common uh, tactic for doing that would be to say, I'm going to do, um, we'll call this tactic, uh, on page, oops, I have to move things around here. Uh, this is what this is part of what's nice about uh, mind maps is you can you can drag these uh, these things around. It's not behaving quite the way that I would like right now. But um, so uh, on page SEO uh, and you know we'll just say titles, URLs. Descriptions, et cetera. So, so that's a tactic. So now um, what else might we be doing to increase organic traffic? Uh, we're gonna, another tactic might be to um, create uh, product videos. So, Again, we're, we're fleshing out sort of the, the idea of this part of the process is just to flesh out like what are, like get from, I mean, Chris, as Chris described, like what the, what the C-level person is gonna generally care about are the goals and objectives. And then um, from a marketing standpoint, we wanna understand the relationship between the tactics that we're doing up to the, the uh, goals and objectives. So I'm not gonna keep going in this mind map, but, but just to emphasize that one of the things that's useful about this is that like we may have as an activity in, in marketing right now um, that we are uh, working on the um, uh, implementing um, tracking so that we can, can improve the checkout process, improve the conversion rate on the site. And so, so then we're like, okay, well, well, so improving the conversion rate on the website, that doesn't exactly, like that's not really serving the objective of growing e-commerce revenue. What objective is that serving? Well, I guess the objective that's probably serving there would be to improve the conversion rate of visitors on the website. So, so sometimes, which you, like, you know the tactic that you're doing is serving a company goal, but you can't necessarily define that relationship. And so, so creating these relationships, again, to sort of create a language to translate the, the tactics that you're doing. Once we have this built out, then we can go to, oops, let me see, um, a, uh, a version of, the uh, like, like taking this idea of objective strategy and tactics. Um, and, and now, since our goal is to prove the value, I mean, the, the, the reason uh, what we're here to talk about today, and I'm going to confuse terms here with the goal, uh, the reason we're here today is to talk about how um, we communicate the value of marketing to the C suite. 
So as Chris described, like as marketers, we tend to be very metric focused. We tend to be, especially digital marketers, we really tend to be thinking in terms of, you know, what's the engagement rate in our social campaigns? What's the open rate in our emails? Um, what's our, you know, how's our, our average ranking changing? Um, things that are, are really specific to our domain. So the, the, um, if we have these tactics, and we've added a few more in here, but we have the on-page SEO stuff. So, so, so now um, what I want to do is I want to start to establish like, like what are examples of metrics that I can use to measure like whether these tactics are working. So an example of a metric for optimizing, optimizing product page titles, descriptions, and URLs might be, in fact, specifically to um, measure, uh, or I'll just say ranking, the metric is uh, ranking over time um, for product pages. Um, and maybe we say, since specifically our, the remembering that the goal was this year, so a good way of thinking about this, and again, this is really important, is to think in terms of, well, so if the CEO is thinking um, in terms of, of year over year, then as marketers, we should be thinking year over year. So what we want to talk about is we were able to, um, to uh, improve the, the ranking um, for products and, and thereby also improving the, um, the traffic to product pages um, to product pages, and then um, measuring revenue from product pages. So, so as we build this out, we're coming up with metrics that map to each of our tactics. Um, the other thing that we want to do is start thinking about metrics that map to the strategies and objectives, right? So we, in marketing, we tend to think very, like we do usually measure, uh, well, the results of our tactical efforts. Um, but don't forget that if the overall effect of our message is that increasing organic, organic uh, page traffic for products is gonna increase revenue, then up here is, actually, I'm gonna move my traffic to product pages up, up to, to here. Um, and <clears throat> so overall traffic to product pages, because that's our, our, our strategy is to increase um, traffic there, and then increasing the uh, increasing online sales. Uh, the metric there, of course, is going to be online sales year over year. So then, the the next thing that we want to do is think about well, who who cares about these things? So um, the online year over year, as we talked about, I mean that is sort of sea level, um, and uh then um and you know one thing i will say is that like the title of this workshop is is communicating the value to the c-level um the the c-suite uh you know it doesn't like whether it's c-suite or not doesn't particularly matter i mean the idea is that like if it's an owner operated business then the owner cares about these things um then sort of next down tactically like this person might be on the increasing organic page traffic uh, for products might be the VP of marketing. Uh, and then down here, once we get to the tactical level, um, this is sort of marketing manager. Um, this is, you know, this could be uh, the SEO um, person. So, so again, the idea being that there's this hierarchy of, um, you know, and I'm filled out a bit here. So we have these different metrics that we're using. So we're creating product videos and organic video traffic is something that we want to measure. Uh, and again, that's going to be something that's interesting to the marketing manager. Uh, the one, before we move on from here, uh, one more thing to emphasize is that this idea of like, if, if the, the overall goal is a, a quarterly goal, then we want to do quarter on quarter measurements. If the goal is an annual goal, then we want to do annual measurements when we talk about it 
Um, and when we look at it ourselves, like, cause if that's the way, if that's the time frame that we're reporting upwards on, then we should be thinking in that time frame um, as a marketing team when, when we, we communicate with each other. Uh, you know, it, certainly there's no problem when, when looking at a more granular level, but when you think about like building dashboards and, and the different uh, mechanisms you have to keep track of how you're doing, um, thinking in the same time frame as the people that you're reporting up to. So uh, before I switch back um, and, and Chris will share the presentation, um, any questions on this process. So again, a kind of fluid process, mind mapping, typically the leadership, your, the owner, the C-level is going to have an idea of company goals and, and you're going to have an idea of what tactics you're doing. And the idea, like your, what the purpose of this is to, to understand the relation, relationship between those things. Right. Uh, so I will stop sharing. Okay. So we've come up with these metrics. So then the next thing we wanted to talk about is, okay, so the, what we're here about is communicating the value to the C-suite. Now we understand the, the things that we want to communicate. Um, so next slide. So first of all, sort of I, this, honestly, we do this. Uh, and, and so if you do this, certainly don't feel sheepish, is like we're digital marketers. We're used to seeing granular data and understanding trend lines and looking at a spreadsheet of, of keywords or landing pages or video ads or, or you know, and looking at ROAS and, and CPA and, and um, things like that and, and interpreting that data and understanding how it serves goals. Um, that is not what the, uh, the owner of the business, the C-level person wants to see. Um, again, like the, 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 what, what they care about is the goals and how you're impacting those goals. And I, I mean, I will tell you that this is something like, like, this is not just an abstract idea. This is not just a sort of like you should, and, and, and it's kind of obvious, like, that our tendency, like we still do this, even though we know better, is to sort of month in, month out, like the easiest thing to do is that you're monitoring these things. And so uh, like I've had these conversations um, time and time again, where I'm sitting there and I'm saying, isn't it great we, you know, managed to get our, um, you know, whatever, uh, a thousand more pages indexed in Google. Um, and, and they're like, don't give a crap. <laughs> I said, we wanted to get this product launched this year. Um, and how is this helping me get this product launched? So very real problem. Next slide. Uh, so again, I guess emphasizing this point, um, do love dashboards. Uh, the, if you've tuned into some of these other workshops, I've certainly talked, talked about dashboards a lot. Big fan. Um, the the problem with dashboards is, um, is you know again it's this this idea of, of tying things together. So the next slide. Um, so so what we want to do is it, it's fine. To, I mean you do want to include metrics for sure. Uh, sort of somebody that has successfully built and, and runs a business is going to tend to be very metrics oriented. But what you want to do is put it in context and have a story about how the, the activities that you're doing are related to those goals. And there may be cases, like you may have a big success and you think it's worth sharing. Um, so, uh, but put it in terms of this is how this is impacting this goal. So, so uh, next slide. So a couple of things. So, so um, Chris is going to go through actually like, how you would plan out conversation, the, the a regular conversation 
um, assuming that you're in a position of overseeing some aspect of marketing and you're having regular conversations with somebody higher up in the organization. And that's the point of this. And, and she's going to get into a bit of detail about the structure of those conversations. But a couple of key points. One is absolutely sing your praises. Like, don't forget about the fact that the things we do are things that impact the bottom line. And, and I think, honestly, sometimes we just take that for granted. So, so if like we drove sales, if we impacted sales via marketing, um, sing it out loud, make a big deal out of it. Uh, next slide. Conversely, another place where I, I see marketers falling down all the time is that if something that you're doing is not succeeding, be proactive about it. So again, like assuming the person that you're reporting up to is a decent person, like they don't have a problem with things not working. What they have a problem with is things not working and there being no plan to get them working. So, and, and, and you've probably been challenged this way. It's like, okay, well, this isn't working. What are we gonna do differently? So beat them to the punch, come in with, hey, we tried this tactic. We, we thought creating video, product videos would help us increase visibility in organic um, video search. Uh, and uh, we did it and it doesn't seem to be moving the dial. And we have this goal for the year and we need to move the dial. So we're gonna change it up. We've decided that we're gonna put more energy into creating, creating product guides because we started creating product guides and that is growing traffic. Um, so again, that idea of that's how they're thinking. So beat them to the punch, show up for that meeting with, this is what's working, yay us, this is what's not working, this is what we're gonna do differently. Uh, next slide. And right, I so believe keeping, this is back to you. Yeah, keeping those things in mind, those, those general concepts about um, combining metrics and narratives, singing your own praises um, and being proactive. Here's what we would recommend for a regular conversation um, with your manager, your manager's manager, the owner of the company, um, one of the leaders inside of your company. And generally what you're gonna be talking about is the company goals and objectives and how your marketing is uh, contributing to those, the specific strategies that you've employed and how those are going. And then a sort of catch all called what's keeping you up at night, which I'll describe in a little bit. So the first thing is to talk about those goals and objectives. So restate what you understand as the company's goals and objectives and show what the measurements overall um, are towards those objectives. So for example, what is, you know, the goal of revenue was 20% increase for this year. What is, um, how is our revenue tracking uh, year to date for that revenue? Um, and then if there are any top level metrics um, that your uh, leadership gets value out of, like uh, co customer acquisition cost or marketing total number of marketing qualified leads, this would be a good section to, to describe those into. So you're providing a general overview of how are we doing towards the goals and objectives that we know you leaders are, are um, interested in. It's also a good opportunity to get any updates on the goals and objectives, um, because as we know, these things change. Um, so it's a good time to check in on those. Is there any, any updates you need to know um, that will help you uh, help the company achieve these better going forward? Then we're gonna get a li little bit more um, detailed, a little narrower. So for each of the strategies that you've identified, of how you're going to um, help the company achieve these objectives. What is the strategy? How are you measuring it? You know, what are the, the metrics? What are the numbers? And this is a good place um, where you can bring in a table, a graph, a single metric with the context of like, uh, you know, we're at five now and we were at four last month and we were at three a year ago. So don't forget that context. But here's a place where you can bring in the specific numbers of what you are measuring and then bring in some narrative. So highlight um, the performance here. Give some anecdotes about how, uh, where you're seeing success or where you're seeing areas for improvement. So you can really sort of humanize 
what those numbers are, are saying to you. Share that um, with your leaders about how those strategies are working towards the overall goals and objectives. The other thing I would say is this is a place to think about what you need. So if you need budget or support to fulfill the strategy, this is a good place to ask for that because you set the groundwork to say, I'm employing this strategy because it's gonna help us reach the objective. That's the context that your leader needs to understand in order to uh, approve the budget that you're asking for. So let's say that um, in order to uh, in order to understand whether the conversion rate optimization project you're on is working, you need to have some tracking added to the website. And that needs development time. And you really need to make your argument for why development should spend their time on this when they've got a dozen other priorities. Here's your framework for that. I need that tracking because I think that conversion rates, improving conversion rates from 1% to 1.5% could have a revenue impact of $3,000 a month. And that will help us achieve our revenue goal. That is why I am asking for your support in prioritizing this development, um, this development project. Can I get your support for that? So this is the time to ask that. This is the framework that, that helps them understand that request in context. The other thing to think about is if your strategy isn't working, and this is what Nico talked about, about being proactive. Sometimes our strategies don't work. Sometimes our tactics don't work. You should be the one to recognize that first and have some alternatives um, that you are willing to shift to and how you want to what you want to do going forward. And even if that's abandoning the tactic altogether, um, being able to talk about that and have the information around maybe why it failed or why you want to change direction um, will be impressive, right? You'll be out in front of the questions and be prepared to answer the questions that you're getting from leadership. The, and I don't mean to be all doom and gloom. One of your strategies is outperforming what you expected it to do. Um, here's a good time to talk about that as well and the details of that. And then the third section about this is the keeping, what's keeping you up at night question, which is a, um, a really intriguing question that our colleague uh, Noah Lerner likes to ask customers. Um, and this section is really just about what's on your mind. Because remember I talked about the CEO has a long view of the company, but they're also keeping their eye out for what hurdles there might be coming up that would affect our ability to reach those goals in the long term? What are those hurdles? What are some unexpected opportunities? You're going to get asked those things by your leadership. And so I would recommend that you set aside time in that regular meeting to follow up on something they asked about last month, right? So last month they said, hey, I'm actually really uh, concerned because we have a supply chain interruption um, in, in uh, you know, there's a ship uh, tied up at the docks that has all of our bikes of this particular brand. Um, and so I need, I'm concerned about how that's going to affect revenue. This is a good time to come back to that issue and say, I heard you, I investigated, I changed strategies in this way, and here's how I think it's going to be okay. So you're going to follow up on those concerns. And then also ask for any new concerns. So what risks and opportunities are on your mind that might affect our ability as a company um, to reach these objectives? And how then can I help as a marketer shift our priorities um, or help you understand the depth of the, the problem or the opportunity better with access to the data that I have right here? Um, so this is another, this is a good way to stay in sync with what's top of mind of your manager um, and the leaders in the company from time to time. So that's the, you know, having a regular meeting agenda, meeting around those topics will really um, help you start to communicate in a way that, that, um, that the leadership understands. So instead of droning on about social media engagement, you can say our conversion rate optimization project contributed $15,000 in revenue growth this month. Um, and it, so instead of being in the weeds, you're talking in the language of leadership. You're helping them understand how your efforts 
um, and your results are contributing to the objectives and the goals of the company as a whole. So we presented a lot of information, some methodologies in this slideshow. We will um, share the slides with you after the presentation. Um, there will also be a sharing of the recording um, and we've got office hours coming up. If you're, there's a couple, you know, we didn't, there's a lot of stuff we haven't talked about about that would improve um, how you communicate with the C-suite. And so I wanted to share a couple of our favorite um, resources if you wanna think about this in a deeper way. So our most popular blog ever is a blog called Eight D Data Storytelling Concepts with Examples. And I think they're helpful ways of thinking about how to take your data and tell an interesting story with it. Um, Similar theme, but different approach from a, a workshop that Nico gave earlier this year called Analytics with Purpose, which is really about how to transform data into stories. So how to pull in context, how to pull in um, other information so that that data is really meaningful to other people. And then another resource we, Nico and I really love is um, Avinash Kashink is a um, is a professional in the world of marketing analytics, and he talks a lot about both selection of data um, and, and metrics, but also how to think about them, how to be more strategic with them. And the impact matrix is a model for thinking about which metrics you might be, um, might be interested in covering are less strategic and which ones are more strategic and how to sort of get from less strategic to more strategic in in what you're collecting and how you're thinking about it. Objectives are, stick around, ask that question in office hours. Also, we do custom marketing analytics um, consulting projects. So one of the things we love to do is build dashboards that don't suck because they're based on some of the principles that we've described here. So we can build marketing dashboards to help you um, to help you do marketing better. We can build dashboards that help communicate the right kind of um, stats to your, uh, to your C-suite, which you give them not in email, but in a discussion. Um, so we'd love to talk with you about that. We do have some upcoming workshops that we would love for you to participate in. Our September workshop is around overcoming bias in digital marketing. And our October workshop is around making SEO decisions with Search Console data. So please do join us again. 